I'm play devil's advocate again. All right. Critics say, yeah, but you're being pimped. You're being pimped by the record, record executives who will allow you to do your thug life because it portrays a certain black. I mean, you've heard it, yeah. that if you were just a singer, you wouldn't have the same record contract you have. Right. But because you portray the thug life, the gangster rap, they've allowed you to make that money. They've allowed you to push and make your platinum. I beg to differ. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm getting pimped. That's true. But um, just like how a, how a woman would be, you know what I'm saying? Anybody to be pimped. You know, it's like, it's not that you get pimped. It's how long you get pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because if you really look at this situation, it is not I who's being pimped. When you look at them white kids with Raiders hats on, it's the white folks getting pimped. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm making their future. I'm writing down their curriculum. Right now, what I write in my album today, when it comes out in two months, that's what white kids is doing. So who really is getting pimped? I'll be, I'll be, I'll, what I'm writing in my raps is what them white kids is going to be saying to their mamas and daddies when they come home. Who is getting pimped? You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a high school dropout. You know what I'm saying? As far as my teacher told me when I was in high school, I ain't going to be you know what I'm saying? I just got to, it's going down. You know what I'm saying? It's going down. <laughs> you know, everybody's getting pimped. Whether you work a nine to five or whether you work for yourself, you're getting pimped by somebody. That's not, the, that's not the crime. The crime is how long you allow yourself to get pimped. You have to come up. Everything is a come up. Everything is a struggle. You start from the bottom, work it to the top. Me, I have no um, patience for anybody that doubts me. None. At all. It's too hard out here. You know what I'm saying? If my people don't stand up for me, who is? I understand these white folks looking at me like that because they don't know me. They didn't hear keep your head up. That ain't no fluke. You know, keep your head up ain't no goddamn uh, come up. I didn't do that for my to be smiling in my face to say, oh, he's cool. I did that from my heart. So that if they do try to put a rape charge on me, my sisters could say he ain't about that. Now, if my sisters can't say that, you won't hear another keep your head up out my mouth. You understand me? Because it's a struggle on young black males today. We killing each other because we killing ourselves. We're not, when a man, when another man, I know, I've been in a position, it don't, it's, not, it's out of our control. It's not like he wants to kill. He just doesn't want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's that, it's that situation when you got, we, we are living in a war zone. It's not as easy as these people are making us think that they just got some criminal ass black kids with guns. It is not like that. We live in hell. We live in the gutter. We got us stacked up 80 deep in one building you know, by the time you get out your house, you strapped but to protect yourself. Because you're living in the same community that the police is carrying rifles and riot gear. Same they need them riot, riot, excuse my language, I'm so sorry. The same reasons they need the riot hat, the riot jacket, the flak jacket, the double vest, the 9mm Glocks with extra bullets, the tear gas, the mace, all that. Who do you think the police is using that against? Dogs? So we fighting the same villains that they fight in the street. But instead of them seeing us fighting villains in the street, we all villains. And the main thing for us to remember is that the same crime element that white people are scared of, black people are scared of. The same crime element that white people fear, we fear. So we defend ourselves from the same crime element that they scared of. You know what I'm saying? While they waiting for, to, for the legislation to pass and everything, we next door to the killer. We next door to them, you know, because we up in the projects where it's 80 in the building. All them killers that they letting out, they right there in that building. But it's better, just because we black, we get along with the killers or something? We get along with the rapists because we black and we from the same hood? What is that? We need protection too. You even admit it. I don't live in that neighborhood anymore. There's no real reason for you to carry a nine millimeter. Don't believe that. Why? In, in two years, I've had a gun pulled on me by my limo driver, by police, by everybody. You know what I'm saying? And I better be. I better be. You know what I'm saying? I've been attacked. You ain't read the papers about these skinheads trying to blow up black churches. Why? They see me as the enemy just like y'all do. You know what I'm saying? They can come to my house and sit outside my house just like anybody else can. A skinhead. And once my life is gone, it's gone. Can't nobody give it back to me. Not the judge, not the president, not the governor, not Calvin Butts, not Jesse Jackson. They can't do nothing but come to my funeral and talk pretty about how black people suffer. You understand? And as far as Jesse Jackson, my first acting job was at the Apollo Theater when Jesse Jackson was running for president in 1984. It hurts me for him to say anything negative about any rapper because we supported him. He should support us. You know what I'm saying? As far as his image, you know what I'm saying? What was he? What was he doing? You know, he should be the last person talking about gun violence when he sat right there while Martin Luther King caught one in the neck. You know what I'm saying? Things ain't really changed that much. 